I want to go back though just talking about because we're showing this graph right now and it seems as though although we're seeing a little bit of an uptick in hospitalizations, ICUs they're going up just a little bit as well, but definitely not as much as the last winter surge. So it seems as though in regards to cases, a completely different story. We're seeing cases surge, the virus, the Omicron variant is spreading, but it looks as though it is not as severe. Are you still concerned though, that in the coming weeks, we could possibly see hospitals maybe to continue to tick upwards past the winter surge that we saw last year? Well, all indicators are pointing toward a downward trend on the East Coast. Uh, and therefore, uh, the West Coast typically follows a week or two behind. And so I actually am anticipating that caseload will begin to drop within the next week or two. And hopefully so will the strain on hospitals to follow. I know a lot of people, you know, we've heard from health officials, we've heard uh, around the world talk about that uh, this variant of COVID is going to infect nearly everyone because it is so transmissible. There's a mentality out there that uh, people might have, which is, you know, if this is not as severe, I might as well just get it and get it over with. Do you advise against that? Certainly, uh, you should always try to protect yourself from getting something that otherwise could potentially hurt you. Uh, vaccination and boosters can in fact do that, uh, which is why we continue to press on that. Um, if you just uh, allow yourself to get sick, assuming you'll have very mild symptoms, the reality is that you may not. You may get very sick, you may get myocarditis, uh, you may end up with some permanent lung damage. It's always a risk. And so it would definitely not be something I would recommend. Now with the people that are in the hospital right now, we know that uh, this virus, this variant of the virus is impacting both those who were vaccinated, fully vaccinated, even boosted, as of course those who have not received any shots. So I wanna ask you about the people who are in the hospital right now. Who are the people in the hospital and do you think that the people who are there right now receiving care, it could have been prevented? Yes, because the folks who are winding up in our ICU are still either unvaccinated or incompletely vaccinated, meaning not boosted. Um, and in fact, 80% of the cases in the ICU currently are not vaccinated at all. The other 20% didn't get boosted. And very, very rarely are we seeing one, if any, um, individuals who are breakthrough cases that were fully vaccinated and boosted. So it seems as though people who have received their booster shots even though they may be getting infected, you're not seeing them in the hospital. You're not seeing them with severe disease. That, that's correct. All right, I wanna talk about a milestone that, we, that we're seeing today, actually. Uh, state data shows that 50% of people in Kern County uh, have received uh, at least, have, have full protection against the virus in, in, regards to, in, in regards to vaccinations. They're considered fully vaccinated. 50%, uh, half of the population. It sounds good, Dr. Goldis. But then when you think about it, there's also 50% of the population that has no protection. Are you concerned? I am, uh, especially compared to the rest of California who are doing better than Kern County overall with regard to their vaccination and booster rates. It leaves our population in particular rather susceptible. And of course, the more folks who open themselves up to infection uh, allow this virus to continue to replicate and mutate and ultimately develop or possibly um, evolve into more variants. And so we're trying to stop this cycle of infection and variant creation by getting folks vaccinated. I wanna talk about this new treatment that was announced yesterday and Kern Medical is gonna be offering it. Um, this seems as though we've got, we're even getting more treatment uh, to protect people from severe infection. Talk about what's being offered at Kern Medical and why it's uh, such a big, big deal. Yeah, so this is a unique uh, monoclonal antibody called Evusheld. It's actually a combination of two monoclonal antibodies given by injection uh, sequentially, one right after the other, intramuscularly or within the muscle. The uh, great thing about this is that it's a pre-COVID uh, prophylactic treatment, meaning that we can give it to individuals before they get infected with COVID, and we want to target individuals who are at very high risk of developing complications from an infection. So does this replace the vaccine? Not at all. Uh, the vaccine allows an individual to create antibodies against the virus and has a very high level of protection uh, overall. Uh, this particular agent is for people who are 
immune compromised or impaired in their ability to mount an immune response. And therefore, we're giving them the antibody instead of asking their bodies to, to make it. Uh, we also are targeting individuals who are very, very much at risk because they have an underlying cancer problem like le leukemia or lymphoma, or they have a transplant recipient or on their immune suppressant medications. And so these are folks who, uh, even if we gave them a vaccine, they may not be able to right. produce antibodies. Uh, however, this will do that for them. So that is just another tool in our uh, tool chest to fight COVID-19 and severe infection. Dr. Goldus, as always, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Do appreciate it. Thank you.